this is Michael from Ever Since Barbershop in Mississauga. Today I'll be doing a hair tutorial on my boy Juggy. Let's get it. So today we'll be doing a bald fade, mid bald fade, with a little bit of crop on top, with a hard fringe. Uh, we're gonna keep the beard nice and heavy. We're gonna blend it in, nice line up, and texture the top. So right now I'm gonna start off with my liners. I'm gonna take it right up to his temple. Take it right across. Hey Juggy, how's your day, bro? Uh, Staying busy, busy? Yeah. You guys do anything for the long weekend? I think I have a long weekend. Oh, yeah, true. Yeah, the When's the next one? Columbus Day? Yeah, I guess uh, May, May 24th. Yeah. That's Columbus Day, right? Mm hmm. So now, I'm gonna use my wall, my wall magic clip. I'm gonna open up the guard and maybe go an inch higher. So you guys didn't go out, Juggy? On the weekend? Yeah. Nah. Had to. Not with Ishan? Went to, I think I went to a bar to watch Austin. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. Was it interesting? I didn't watch any of it, man. It was the best Austin game ever. I'm gonna go halfway. You didn't watch it? I'm gonna be under here. I'm gonna take out this one. Uh, no, I didn't watch it still. Was the dunk off good or like a three point competition or something? Yeah. I'm gonna go fully closed. My richest uh, bachelor parties in April, yeah. Oh, did you end up going to the, the back in jail? No, I had to go to a family party and I like, couldn't get out of, so. Where, where did you, what did you do for the back? Just going to Miami, bro. In April too? With my zero guard by Andes, an open position, about like an inch. Are you guys just going there with your cousins? Now I'm just gonna go halfway with my Andes card here and go underneath my my guideline. What the hell is this like? Is this one of your cousins? From here? From here, two of his best friends are also doing it. So all three of them are doing it together. I asked, your, I asked Rahul if he was going, he's like, nah. Oh, okay. No, 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 it's my, it's my like, cousin. Like, we're all going to the family friend, right? Oh. I'm going to go use my zero guard close. I'm going to tack that line right here. Mm -hmm. You 
you get me singing on the other shit? Jeez. Jackie, did you hear those off by fives? I saying you had to wait like downtown. No, I was You didn't use your bot? I got a fucking Supreme bot. Oh. Yeah, only works on Supreme. I still haven't used it. Is there any big drops coming up? Did you see that they're dropping the machine here? It's right? so my number two guard close. I'm just gonna flick it right off the top temporal section here. So he's my number two guard. I'm just gonna bring this up a little bit higher, but I'm gonna keep it nice and square. Saying no juggy, man. Would you eat the Oreo though? I wouldn't pop them unless I get them like for like five bucks. Saying a girl about to bust it open, wide open for a fucking Oreo? I'm not opening the pack. Jeez. I bet you could go and pay like over a hundred bucks for a pack of Oreos. That's crazy. That means my number one guard in the open position to blend out this line over here. Pretty hard. <laughs> How much do you go for? Gino? Gino? 14, 1500? Or you get the. For, for a cold, it's not even like a winter on, jacket. On grill. Yeah, I know, before you could get it on. on. God damn it, Kanye, have a fuck of that. I know, I bought like a couple pairs of like Vizlum shoes, and I was like, fuck it. I didn't even know what Vizlum was. Seriously? Until that was like. So Drake wore it on after the. Bro, that's, that's my high school dream, fam. Really? Yeah. It's so expensive. I know, but we don't pay retail. We go to Grail. <laughs> so now I'm gonna attack this .5 line with my masters in the halfway position. Oh, Jiggy, what's Rahul saying today? I don't know. Is he's he? Not, he's not with right now. Oh. He's coming, right? Not here? No. He's not? Cancelled it. That's what I was like, oh, I don't know what he's doing today. I'm not sure. Jeez. He needs a break from T.O. He from... never cancelled T.O. Yeah? I know. Probably he's going somewhere. Yeah. Have that slot available? Uh, I think someone took it already, yo. Yeah. Sean yeah. is trying to get a cut. Today? Today or tomorrow, or I don't know if you have time tomorrow. Oh, damn you, Sean. 
Yo, does Jason usually talk like that? He sounded like he was American for a second. No. From America. You meet his girl yet? Mm. Why? That's so early? So early. So him, Sean, some other guy. So. Oh, Sean still lives out there? Yeah, Sean still lives out there. What does he do? Is he like a chef? But he doesn't even do that. I think he works at, um, Why? at a gym. He's a fitness chef, man? He's a fire chef. I know, I heard. When I used to cut his hair back in the day, like, he'd tell me, it would sound pretty cool. So now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna clean up a little of the bangs area. I'm use my number two guard. Most important thing is you don't wanna dig in, you wanna keep it nice and straight. And just, just get a little bit of the edge. I'm gonna fade into the beard. I'm gonna use my my wall in the close position. I'm gonna take it right around midway here. I'm gonna open up halfway. I'm gonna bring it a little bit lower. I'm gonna open up all the way. I'm gonna take it a little bit lower. Right here. Use my zero guard in the close position. Same thing, I'm just gonna move downwards. So I'm gonna start right over the ear. Open up halfway. And open up all the way, I'm gonna go a little bit lower than that. Most important thing here is you want to angle the blade, kind of get a little softer effect to blend into the layers of the beard. Just kind of flick it out. Hey, Juggy, man, all these rappers are dying, you know? Yeah, I pop, pop some more. So he's my zero now. I'm gonna go halfway. A little bit lower. I'm gonna go fully open. Right around right over here. And this is zero, in a close position. I'm gonna go halfway. Take the mustache down a little bit. I'm gonna go halfway with the zero. Bring it down, please. Open it up. Rolling up the tag. It's as well as like a square. I know, I've noticed that, what it's that, called. That's the only one. What's it called? Ulysses? Is it? Oh, yeah, Ulysses or whatever it is. Some shit. It's nice, though. That's the only one everyone knows. The complication on that watch looks fucking insane, dude. Like, the roulette thing actually spins. Yeah, that's crazy. I don't know. But is it really currency, though? Mm -hmm. It's a Jacob, fam. Jacob's a Jacob, but a Rolly's a Rolly. Currency. People around the world don't know what Jacob is, but they know what AP is. Ooh. Oh, whatever. Then you got money. You get a $16 million Bugatti at the car show. So for me, I'm aiming my blade from the bottom of the lip to the top of the ear. Create more of this angle. And I'm gonna start curving it right here towards the end of the eye. So, so 
I'm gonna draw my imaginary line here. I'm gonna dab into the beard. And I'm gonna slightly move at that angle upwards. At the top here, I'm gonna start my curve. So I'm gonna aim this part of the blade towards the ear to kind of keep that same angle from here to there. Right. Curve it in. I'm just gonna clean up the hairs on top of the cheek. No one likes that. Yeah, so you wanna comb the hairs down when you land on top of the mustache here, on the top of the lip. You wanna push these hairs inside so you kinda know what you need to cut off. Start through the middle. my finger here to kind of get inside the tight spots of like the lip. I'm gonna push the hairs in here. I'm gonna get any of the hang off here. Hang off here. I'm gonna go to the top of the mustache. Kind of tighten this part in a little bit. Start with the line up here. You always want to comb the hair down in front. I like to start through the middle. Are you are you are you the optimal? Typically with edge here, we usually end at the the end of the eyebrow, usually, but not for everybody. Okay. Same thing here, I'm gonna push the hairs out so nothing's hanging off. So just like the other side, we're gonna repeat. We're gonna keep the, the same angle with the beard when we line it up. So we're gonna start from the top of the top of the ear here towards the bottom of the lip. Lucifer. <laughs> Every time I listen to this song, Jiggy, man, I'll see you later, bro. Lucifer. 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 The other side, we're gonna keep it at the same angle. We're gonna curve it in slightly. Same thing with the mustache. We're gonna comb it all down. I'm gonna push this side in to get in a tight pocket spot here. Jesus Christ. <laughs> What's it? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Someone told me those Mona Lisa's, you know the ones that I, the one that I bought? You're going for like 700 bucks right now. I'm like, what the? It's Cindy. You want to ask me if it's an appointment?
Jeez. This is a crispy tea, crunchy tea. Cheese! Uh, for me, I like crispy, crispy lineup. For me, that always kind of uh, is my favorite thing to do in barbering is uh, the lineup part. Uh, it's just really cool to see a nice sharp line, but you typically don't want to push it more than the natural hairline. Like if you're taking it like an inch up or centimeter up, an inch up, then his natural hairline, then that's a super pushback. You don't want to do that. You want to keep it as natural as possible, but still keeping it nice and crispy. And also not going too wide on the side here, because some barbers I see, they go too wide back here. And then it grows in all left up, so you don't want that. So you want to keep it nice and clean, and kind of follow the natural hairline. Usually for me, I like to stand in front of a client. When I do their lineup, just to double check to see how it is, and then I can kind of make adjustments as needed. And also you want to look at the mirror as well, because it also helps. Sometimes your eyes will lie to you, but the, but the mirror will never lie to you. So for Juggy here, uh, we're going to shape up his beard first. I'm going to blow dry it out just to see if there's any kinks. Why are you doing that way? Hmm? Why are you doing that way? Just to kind of bring it out. I just want to see the shape of it because naturally we keep the, the weight forward. And I'm trying to go with his natural pattern here. For his beard, it goes a, a little bit more sideways here. So I'm going to go with the, the direction of how the hair grows. I'm just kind of tease it out just to kind of see the overall shape of it, see if there's any like kinks in his beard. Uh, right now I'm on low power on, uh, on one, so like low heat. I want to kind of use the, the kind of heat to help straighten the hair because some guys have like waves in their, in their beards and using heat you can kind of straighten it out a little bit, kind of smooth it out. And for Juggy's beard here, his hair actually grows more this way, so. Right now we're using a little round brush just to kind of smooth it out a little bit. So now we're going to start shaping up his beard. Once again, I'm going to comb right through. You can see the hair down here kind of grows a little bit more longer, it kind of curls out. So I'm just going to comb it naturally with a wide set of the comb just to kind of bring out like kind of the natural flow of his beard. Comb it normally. Here's my, my wall in the close position. For me, I move, I'll work one side and another side. Right now, we're going to keep that natural flow from where his jawline is, where the beard grows. I'm just going to smooth it out. Pretty much, I just try to keep it parallel, like this way, or this way, side by side. This way, I'm just like, looking at any fly weights that are just kind of hanging out, so I just want to kind of smooth it out. We want to create like a nice smooth shape here. When we stand in front, we want to keep everything like nice and flush. So right now, I'm just taking a little bit of length. Sometimes you want to kind of go with that natural flow of how the beard set here, towards the main layer, and over here, you can see there's a little bit of a wave. Move that out, same thing up here. This side, you can see how his hair naturally wants to pop out because his hair actually is like this. And I'm gonna start from my center line towards the outside of the beard. Go towards like the neckline here.
See how his hair likes to pop out here? Go sideways. Move that out. Same thing here, we have hairs popping out here, so I'm gonna go move that out. I'm standing in front of the client, grabbing any little small hairs that I see. Over here we have a little bit of bulk. I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna smooth it out a bit. I'm just gonna go with the natural flow of the beard. Now we have a nice natural shape. Same thing with here. We're gonna use the flat part of the blade. We're not gonna dig in the skin. We're not gonna dig on the beard, but we're gonna keep it nice and flat. It's gonna smooth out any like little small like flyweight hairs here as well. I'm just gonna go over this part over here with my liner. So I'm gonna prep it again before I use my shaver. So now I'm gonna use my, my, my shaver, my electric shaver by Andis. I like to kind of go up, actually, yeah, I like to use this part of the blade, especially on tighter areas. You always wanna kind of flick into it like a clipper to kind of blend it in and fade it, so it blends easier into the fade. So I'm kind of going up and I'm flicking up at the end. And then the back part where I have bigger surface area, I like to use both the blades. It's a lot more faster. What's really important is knowing where you left your got your last guy line for the liner, because it'll make your life a lot more easier when you when you blend it out with a shaver, because it's really close. Um, so essentially, always work underneath like wherever you you set like your liner guideline. So for him, we started our guideline right by the temporal, the top of the eyebrow, like right across the head. So I'm giving myself enough room to kind of blend it out. I know we have a line here, but we're gonna blend that out in a second. Well, you, you never wanna, I, what I see with new barbers, they take it way too high in the fade, and now it's too close to their 0 0.5, 0 0.25 number one, and it's almost impossible to take out. So you wanna always work underneath your initial guideline. In this case, we started off with our Andis T outliner. So you wanna work and give yourself a little bit of space underneath, so it's just so it's more smoother. Because this is really easy to blend when it's close to the liner line. Uh, but when you get too high, then you're kind of screwed and now you got to push everything up now because now it's almost impossible to fade. A little trick that I learned too is that you want to dab, to remove this line here, you want to dab into, into that line that we made with the shaver because a lot of barbers I see have an issue blending out the, the like they're, sometimes they're, they may be, there may be a line from like the electric shaver. So an easy way is to just blend it out and kind of just kind of push it down and kind of smooth it out a little bit. So you just want to attack it. Don't go too high, but like just dab the line. And it should smooth it out a little bit more than what it was before.
right now. Uh, make my life easier, I'm gonna use electric shaver and hit both sides of the cheeks, back of the neck and under the neck. So for tighter areas that I wanna pinpoint, I use like the back of the razor blade here. Back of the very important part as well. I feel like some people forget to do this, which is really important, especially to be in this area here. My biggest pet peeve is when people don't prep this area before using the razor. So some people will just use the razor and forget about the hairs here. I feel like it, it grows out like really crappy, so I always like to make sure to go a little bit higher and remove any of those like small hairs that may be there. Especially behind the neck here, you always want to kind of make sure to get that real low behind here. I don't know. And especially underneath the neck as well, you want to make sure to kind of prep that as well. Keep it nice and short. How's the length on top, dude? Okay, we'll add a little texture in that. How you doing? You doing all right? So for his hair, we're just gonna add a little bit of texture. Uh, we look kind of like to do like almost like a textured crop haircut. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start on a point cut into the hair. So you always wanna make sure you don't stab into your fingers. You, when you point cut, you always want to keep the steel blade like resting along, along your finger, and then just use your thumb only. So we're not stabbing. Uh, I find that's a common mistake when people point cut is that they try to stab into their fingers and uh, in kind of rush. Whereas like it's more efficient if you just kind of just let the, the steel blade like rest on your finger and then just use your thumb. So we're adding texture because we want to create like uh, a little bit of separation in his hair. So when he styles it. Uh, let's say with like a clay or a, a hair cream, it really creates a little bit of separation so all the layers don't look like it's all like one single line. It's good, bro. So pretty much when we texture like this, we're not really taking much of the length, we're just kind of creating more like peaks in the hair. So when he pushes it down and it all, you just don't just see like the little lines in his hair. Has more of like a flowy, like blended like look. I know. So right now I'm just doing some touch up work. I'm just pretty much just free handing any of like the small hairs that I see, especially behind the head. Juggy, what are you eating today, yeah? So right now we're gonna use a little bit of shave gel. We're just gonna apply it on the areas that we're gonna use with the razor. So for me, I don't like to apply too, too much. It's gonna kinda get a little bit moist. Shut up. A little bit. I feel like sometimes when I drench it too much with shave gel, then it just starts clumping up and it gets too moist and it can't really get like a nice little line. So I just like to put like just enough that it kind of lubricates the skin for the blade. So now I'm gonna use a hot towel on the face. The hot towel is to help the hairs uh, soften up for the prep for the razor. Uh, <clears throat> so the hot towel is really good because it keeps the face insulated. It's really relaxing for the client. And, um, 
helps soften the hair, so it makes my job when I shave a lot more easier, faster and smoother, with less irritation to the skin. Yeah, so before you start with the shaving process, always use a new blade every single time. It creates the sharpest line, and, and you never want to reuse blades because clients may bleed, and no one wants someone else's blood on you or anything like that, because that's kind of gross. So. So for me, I'm going to start with the back side of this beard here. I'm going to go in reverse hand. Yeah, so I'm going to start underneath the neck now. Uh, let's get all these like, little hairs that I couldn't catch either with the liner or with the shaver. The reason why I use the electric shaver a little bit before is to kind of make my life a little more easier. So what I'm really doing right now is just fine-tuning fine the lines that I've, that I've made. So now I'm going to start with the top, stop top of the beard, and I'm going to follow the same angle that I was. I'm just following the same angle that I created using the liners. Uh, what's really important is you don't want to press too hard when you blade and stuff. It creates a little irritation. You want the blade to do a lot of the work. So you always want to source a really qual a good quality blade to make your life a lot more easier. So for me, I'm going to go against the grain. Just because there's any small hairs. Uh, you don't have to do this. Every client's a little bit different, depending on the sensitivity of the client's skin. For Juggy over here, I've been cutting him for a while, so I know the sensitivity of his skin, so we're not going to have an issue there. So now we're going to start on the left side of his beard. A good technique that I would probably encourage people to learn is go backhand, because it gets in like really tricky areas, as I'll show you especially in the mustache area, because for some guys with their noses and stuff, it's really hard just to kind of push this way. So I'd always recommend learning how to go backhand so you get that maximum kind of uh, reach with the blade, especially in trickier areas. It's a little tricky at first, but it just takes practice. Yeah, so for me, I always like to s stop back of the blade over here on this side of the beard. And I'm using, and then when I move this way, I'm using the front end of the blade just to fine tune it. Almost like a pencil, almost like drawing with a pencil. So I'm mainly using the front part of my blade at this point, even right now. All right. So now, let's start at the bottom of the neck again. With the razor finish, it's always really nice. It gets, it gets the line up a lot more sharper, a lot more cleaner, and keeps the client fresher for a little more longer. So tips for doing the lineups and stuff, you want to use the top part of the blade, and you kind of want to use this corner as like your end point. And right, right now, I'm just using the full part of the blade and always connect to the end of the eyebrow. What I find with new barbers, they pull too hard. And when you pull too hard, you stretch the skin. And then when you relax the skin, it bounces back. So as I said, you just want to pull very minimally, but just enough to kind of stretch the skin. When you over pull it, sometimes you create a different angle. So you really just want to relax the blade on the skin and just let the blade do the work and just kind of go in little small stroke motions. And then when we line up the top of the forehead, uh, I like to stand on top. The reason why I like to bend my clients down is so I can see the entire forehead. It's the same thing here. I start from the middle, from my center grab line, then I move one side at a time. Same thing, nice short strokes, consistent, and not really putting too much pressure on the skin. You want, the, as I said again, you want the blade to do the work. You don't want to be trying to dig the blade in the client's skin. So right now we're holding it at a 45 degree angle and I'm keeping the blade parallel 
parallel with his forehead, so I'm not really changing the angle of the blade. I'm just trying to keep it as parallel as possible. So now I like to stand in front of the client to double check that it's straight. Do you want to sit up, sir? Beauty. Cheese, 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 cheese. So right now I'm using my uh, Dyson hair dryer. Best hair dryer, please sponsor me. <laughs> Shameless advertisement. As you can see, it's the uh, limited edition ever since. Ever since the Dyson collab. Best 2020 pickup of the year. Send me free shit. <laughs> Fuck, man. Imagine me as a YouTuber, though. I gotta get used to talking now. I talk all fucked up, I swear too much. Though. So for Juggy's hair, we're gonna style his hair using a uh, cream-based product. I like it because it creates a nice matte finish with his hair. Uh, for textured haircuts like this, I recommend something that's more matte, something like a clay or a, a hair cream. Uh, I personally don't like using gels for this for this hairstyle. It creates too much of like a wet look and it doesn't really look the best and it really doesn't bring out as much of the texture as a hair cream or a clay. So when you style a crop type haircut, there's really no right or wrong. You just pretty much want to just work the product in and you just kind of want to mess it around. And if you wanted to create texture, you could use your fingertips to kind of create, kind of lift the hair up. You almost like pat it down after, just to create a little bit of more separation in the hair. Nice. All right, Juggy, you're gonna be famous now, fam. What are you guys bringing us on? He's, I don't know. We're, we're gonna see what he creates, and then we're gonna kind of see where we go with it. It's gonna turn as a promo. I don't know. <laughs> Check is like, oh man, <laughs> what I get myself into, fam. And Jason's gonna come through. He's like, yo, fuck, I want one. <laughs> no one asked me. <laughs> Fucking RJ. <laughs> So now we're gonna clean the back of the neck and underneath the neck. Uh, probably one of the most, yeah, super pet peeve. I hate when barbers, they forget this part and they just kind of rush through and it's always important to get, especially towards the back of the neckline here. So first I'm gonna use my liners and then I'm gonna use my electric shaver right after. You also wanna be very careful if you have really sharp liners not to dig too deep behind the neck because the skin behind the neck can be quite sensitive also underneath the neck as well. So you kind of want to go in a nice slow motion here. So start from the base of the neck and work your way up. And to get it that much more cleaner, we're gonna use our electric shaver by Andis. Same thing again, we're gonna use our electric shaver just to get it out much more shorter. Then we're gonna finish off with some talc, uh, just to kind of get any of those like little small hairs that are stubborn. So the one thing about powder, uh, helps kind of dry like moist areas. So let's say if there's any like moisture and stuff, helps to kind of remove any of the hair that may be sticking on, to, on his skin. So here we have it. We have a mid to high bald fade uh, with a crop on top, with a hard fringe, with, uh, with a beard lineup. And we kept a lot of the weight heavy in the beard, nice and heavy. We shaped it up by using the blow drying technique and use a straight razor to finish to make it nice and sharp. And also, before you let the client go, always use aftershave. 
Always use the aftershave to finish. We use this as antiseptic and also just to clean up and prevent any razor burn that may occur. So, so. Oh, yes, yeah, true. New pet peeves that I hate with new barbers is when they spray uh, uh, spray uh, all the aftershave on the client's face and end up breathing it in, getting in their eyes. I like to spray it in an extra and kind of get it right into the skin to the pore. So that's to really get it like, like cleaned up. Uh, I just hate it when barbers just go like a gajillion times on the guy's face and the guy's breathing it in and it's just not pleasant. I used to have that done to me and never really liked it, so. Jeez, vortex collapse. Sick. I'm uh, trying to get a hundred thousand views now. <laughs>